So it is, it is really a war against the human person. Um, and if you want to know how aggressive it is, like Easter Sunday at the White House, the United States of America, mm. they forbid religious symbols wow. at the Easter celebration at the White House and replaced it with trans. Now, Jesse, um, my, I, I really can't, uh, uh, someone in my family is a supervisor of a trans person. And um, this, tra and, and they're in the military, this trans person had just committed suicide. When they went through their effects, they couldn't believe how many drugs they had this poor uh, soldier on. How many drugs they had this wow. poor soldier on. You, you think they're taking young people, they're physically mutilating them. They're pumping them full of dangerous hormones. You know, there's a news story every year, they, oh, High school athletes in Arkansas, football players are using testosterone. Oh, it stopped the world. Meanwhile, we have, you know, medical professionals in partnership with educators, professional educators, mutilating children, pumping them full of dangerous drugs that, that shows a spike in suicide. Um, so th this, is, this is the transhumanist ideology. Then there's the anti-humanism, which is the demographic decline they want it's a war on the human population it's the, it's the war on the human person and um there was a, a book called the wanting seed that came out in 1962 that talked about a future where they promoted homosexuality and sterility and euthanasia and transgender um because they want to control the population and we're there I, yeah we're there yeah, this is uh, we we've entered into a brave new world, Jason, and uh, and again, this is the way I look at it. I think I think history will vindicate me. I think about <clears throat> uh, a bicycle with a with a with a hub and the spokes. We know all the spokes, all the oligarchs that we just named a little while ago, and there's a whole bunch of them. Okay, <clears throat> uh, you know. I, to me, the hub is, and I, you said it right in the beginning of the show, the only person that could be the hub that holds all this together is the actual Antichrist. And the Antichrist has actual access to the mind of Satan. He's like the vicar of Satan because it, it's, it takes somebody much more intelligent than George Soros, than Klaus Schwab, than Joe Biden, than Barack Obama, it's somebody much more intelligent to hold all this together, all these spokes together are held together by this one incredible intellect, which to me, it only a uh, Catholic tradition would tell me that it, that it bespeaks about an intellect known as the Antichrist. Nothing else makes sense because no. it's so organized. It's so there. They seem to be like one step ahead of patriots, people of faith and conservatives. Like one step ahead of us all the time as if they know our next move. So again, I'm telling you, we're dealing with an, with, with an intellect far superior to anybody I just named right now. Biden, Obama, George Soros, way beyond that. You know, on that note, Jesse, they're one step ahead of their own activists. So their own activists are often thrown off by wherever they, the sort of the blob goes next. I've talked to friends of mine who are quote unquote LGBTQ and they're in the quote unquote LGBTQ movement. I'm like, where did this trans thing come from? And most of them are against it. They're like, this is weird. Um, I'm like, where did it come from? They go, we didn't see this coming. You, you, where did it come from? It just showed up <laughs> everywhere immediately. And everyone believed it. You know, I tell my liberal friends, I'm like, you are indoctrinated and I can prove it to you. If you are honest, I can prove it to you in 10 seconds. I'm like, when did you believe there were more to, how many genders do you believe in? And when did you come to believe in it? Mm. And they cannot tell you when or where or how they change their opinion on this. They, we all thought one thing one day, we all think something the next day. And what we even think now is ambiguous because we're afraid to give definition to anything as if then we're going to be the bad guy that the mob is going to attack. They cannot tell you, I read this book or I listened to this speech or I read these journal articles it's just, we believed one thing is self-evident one day, 
And then like eight years later, we believed something else. We're talking about the book that is, is coming up in a few weeks uh, from Sophia Press. It's called The Great Campaign Against the Great Reset. As you can tell, this is a high information book. And this is a book which explains what's been happening the last couple of years and a book that's again, that's explaining what's going to happen in the future. So it's a book that's very relevant because all of us are living it right now. Jason's an award-winning film producer, a human rights activist, and he's been doing this for decades. Uh, Jason, you also have a special introduction to young people, and you call them to the adventure of Eros. So what is this adventure of Eros that you keep alluding to, and what does it have to do with the Great Reset? Yeah, well, you know, the one thing I want young people to understand is we don't want to rob them. They're feeling dispossessed of a beautiful life. But the reality is that in every age as a Christian, as you said, we have Jesus Christ. Like every age is an adventure. Every age has its challenges. And these challenges are very intimate in that their minds have been attacked by pornography before they hit puberty through the smartphones. It's just, it's it's inescapable. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, apps just robbing them of the natural way that young people used to meet each other, whether it would be through family or through friends. Now it's alone in your house on a phone and then you meet alone somewhere and then go home alone and you're alone. Um, So they're, they're angry. So what I wanted them to know is, you know, GK Chesterton said um, an inconvenience rightly considered is an adventure. And the Great Reset is a war on Eros. And when you read about how our creator talks about his relationship with us, it's so often in this language of erotic or marital love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what Satan wants to rob us of is a passionate love of our creator to know that we are loved by him. They want want to rob us of the ability to experience a love in a family, love for our parents. And so what I call young people to do is it's, I call it the adventure of Eros, love, piety, and posterity. They need to love God. They need to love their parents. The love of one's parents is the foundation of piety. If you can separate a child from his parents, you know, it's like separating, uh, you know, a sheep from the shepherd, they're going to be slaughtered. They're going to be butchered. So, you know, love your parents, love God, preserve your moral imagination, Fight to preserve your moral imagination so you can fall in love, experience marital love in the sacrament of marriage, have children, and then together with your spouse and your community, we order our lives to serve our posterity. This is how we break the back of the Great Reset. It's very, it's, it's very simple, not easy, but love God, love your parents, fall in love, get married, have children, and order your life to serving the common good in your posterity and loving your creator. Bang. Bang. 